Hi friends, now smartphones are an integral part of our life. It's clear they have changed everything, but for the better or for the worse, everyone decides for himself. A few years ago, the market offered us a wide variety of exclusive phones, but now all we have are smartphones of the same type with a large touchscreen and short battery life. They are powerful, better, but they don't have the individuality that phone manufacturers have offered us in the past. It was a small introduction, but today we will talk about power banks or portable chargers. The idea of creating this video came after I found a couple of old power banks, more precisely what was left of them. Once these were luxury and cost a lot of money, while having very modest parameters. These samples used batteries for 2000 to 2500 mAh and this was enough to charge the dialer several times and everyone was happy. Such power bank is charging from USB. There was also a solar panel made of obsolete amorphous silicon. The output current or charge current of such a bank could reach half an ampere, a little less or more, and that was enough. The design is very simple. The boost converter in these samples is built on just one chip, not forgotten, but once very popular ME2108. On its basis, we made power banks, drivers for LED flashlights, and whatnot. Taking into account the extremely low cost of the microcircuit, I think it will be quite popular even now. The LCSC company, on the side of which I am now, is a major supplier of electronics and electronic components directly from the manufacturer, so here you can order components without fear of running into a fake. They offer affordable prices, convenient payment methods, and a huge base of components from global brands. A link to the company's website will be found in the description. At the datasheet, we can see that the chip has quite good characteristics. The minimum input voltage is 0.9 volts, which will allow building a power bank with power from one battery. Although this is not the best idea, in the end of the video it will be clear. The block diagram shows that everything necessary for operation is contained in the chip itself, except for the rectifier diode and the boosting element, the choke. The most basic advantage of this microcircuit is an ultra-low idle current. In my copy it was only 4 microamperes, but more on that I will say later. The maximum output current is 0.6 ampere and it's possible to increase it by connection of an external transistor. Moreover, you can use both a field effect and a bipolar transistor. The microcircuit is available in several housing and the output current depends on that. Chips are also available with adjustable output voltage. For that type you can choose the ratio of external divider resistors and get the desired voltage at the output, but my sample is at a fixed output voltage of 5 volts. The manufacturer also lists the values of components of the circuit. We can collect all this on a small printed circuit board and check in work. Conversion efficiency is 85%. Compared to modern chips of this type, this is low, but we are just testing, so it isn't very important. The circuit operates in a simple way. The microchip itself can be accepted as a switch that works with a very high frequency, more precisely 180 kHz, as the manufacturer indicates. When the switch closes, the power from the battery goes to the choke and energy is accumulated in it. When the switch is opened, due to self-induction, there is a surge in voltage which is several times higher than the supply voltage. The more energy pumped into the choke, the more it gives. The current and voltage depend on the parameters of the winding of the choke. This splash is then rectified into a direct current and accumulated in the electrolytic capacitor. Feedback maintains voltage at 5 volts. When we connect the load to the output of the converter, it will actually be powered by the energy stored in the capacitor. The switching, accumulation and return of energy occur exactly 180,000 times per second. Despite the pulse mode of operation of the microcircuit as well as all the components of the circuit will heat up. 
or to be precise, exactly 15% of the initial power will be dissipated in the form of unnecessary heat. But this is the way the world works. At least on Earth it is impossible to exist of systems with an efficiency of 100 or more than 100%. And for those who think that I was paid for these words by Rockefellers, Rothschilds or Oppenheimers, I would say that I appreciate your high rating about me. Let's go back to business. Purely, in order to test everything in hardware, I made a small printed circuit board and installed components. The track on the board were heavily flooded with solder. It will be a kind of heat sink. Rectifying diode with a current 1 ampere is used. It is highly recommended to use short heat diodes for the minimum voltage fault. The reverse voltage of the diode isn't important for this circuit. The capacitor is tantalum for surface mounting, despite the small size of the capacitance is 100 microfarad. Well, now we proceed to the tests. First, let's apply a voltage of about 3.7 volts to the input, imitating a lithium-ion battery. In this photo, we see that the maximum output current was 600 mA. If you increase the load, the output voltage will drop, so this is the limit. Taking into account the measurement, we had a power input of 4.15 watts and at the output we got a little less than 3 watts. Efficiency, unfortunately, is only 71%, but this is taking into account all the losses in the measuring equipment. On the wires and connections, I think in ideal conditions it would be about 80%. Then I fed the input with 1.5 volt from the power supply, simulating a regular battery, but the output current was about 90 mA and my USB meter went out. I didn't expect anything more, since the graphs in the datasheet hinted that. This current will not charge the smartphone. I think it's understandable. The converter provides a more or less normal current with power from 3 volts. The maximum that I received with that voltage is 400 mA, while the efficiency of course will be less and in this case is 63%. The no-load current of the converter supplied from one battery was 0.1 mA and supplied from the lithium battery being only 3 to 4 microamperes. This is very cool, even if you leave the converter turned on, the battery will almost not be discharged. As for the pulsations, they aren't so important since the converter will charge the phone and not power the radio station. But if anyone is interested, the oscillogram is now in front of you. With an output current of 250 mA, the voltage ripple reaches 100 mV with a maximum current of 500 mA to 170 mV. But for such a simple converter without additional filter, it's okay. Well friends, on this the video came to an end. You will find a link to the full archive with a printed circuit board in the description. There are also links to buy similar converters. As always, you can contact our group for all questions. Now I say goodbye until we meet again. With you was Kasyan TV.